Welcome back. So the barrel is now completely modelled and it's basically time to take this barrel and export it into whichever software package you want to texture it in. Now you may be taking the UV templates into GIMP or Photoshop to texture manually. You may be taking the model into Substance Designer or Substance Painter, uh, 3D Coat, Body Paint, um, maybe even Photoshop itself to do some 3D painting. Uh, maybe ZBrush, it may be Mudbox to do a little bit of painting and sculpting or you may be doing it all in Blender. Either way, it's really up to you how you want to approach this. There's a couple of things I just want to check over before I go any further. The barrel itself, I just want to make sure is completely unwrapped because I think we only unwrapped one section of it. So let's just move this down a little bit, go into UV Image Editor and yet we only unwrapped one section of that and then duplicated it. So all we have to do is pack the island. You can see that we get a nice unwrap on this. So that's fine, we don't have to do anything else there. Let's go back to object mode. I'm just going to make sure the barrel itself has a texture on it. We're just going to call this barrel wood. This barrel object here that's hidden is our old low poly version, so I'm just going to delete that from the scene. And the cylinder is the proxy object we used the shrink wrap on, so we're going to delete that as well. The plane needs to be renamed top underscore bottom wood, and I'll also add a material onto that top bottom wood. The rings again, we need a material on that, so we're going to call this metal. We'll just call it metal rings and that's pretty much everything done it's pretty much ready to export out uh, now what i think i'll do just very quickly is just make a low poly version of this so you're going to see how quick it is to actually retopologize this into a low poly version granted this is actually a very very simple model so it's no surprise it's going to be very quick so just hit add Go to a cylinder. I'm going to scale this down. Don't worry, I'm going to reset the scale in a moment. Take this up. Put this on the zero axis. See if you can grab the top face of this and move this up. I want to get this in line. This top panel. Perfect. In fact, let's get it in line with the top of this. Be even better. Let's scale that down. Grab this and scale this down too. Again, trying to get this outside the edge. So this is the tricky part. Now we have to kind of match the details of this barrel without it being too high poly. Now, now that I think about it, the, the cylinder that we created there I think has thirty two sides. So it's so it's more of a kind of hero prop. It's, I don't know if I would go so far as to say it's actually a, a low poly object. It's definitely not going to be hundreds of thousands of polys like the other objects. I mean this barrel itself at the moment is three quarters of a million polys just for the, the barrel, never mind the top and the bottom and the metal. Maybe all in all it's probably a million and a half polys I would say. Let's just Click on wireframe mode. Object mode, let's find our low poly version. Let's just add in some of these seams. So, control loop and slide will be the, the way we go here. Let's actually just make sure we're in edit mode, first of all. There's lots of approaches to take on retopologizing. This particular approach is the way I would do it, just to line everything up as best as possible. I'm lining up an edge with each one of the edges where I want to actually extrude out the rings. So just going to be a simple extrude, no bevels, nothing, just a flat extrude. This is a little bit tricky here. 
trying to work through all this. Now you'll see that some of these rings are actually a little bit off center. So we'll have to remember to go back in and skew those accordingly. Okay, so that's about right. Let's just grab these rings, peel this out, it's about here, rotate this in this view to about here, again grab this one, scale it out, rotate it around, down a little bit. Okay, so we're just matching the geometry we already have with this simple, much simpler geometry. Now, in these large expanses, I could probably get away with keeping that flat for a low poly. This middle one, I definitely think I want to skew out just a little bit, just to try and keep something in there. This one as well, I'll just skew out just very subtly. And the same with this bottom one. This one really needs it. Into there, scale this out. I think that one's pretty flat, so we'll leave that where it is. Same here. This one is a little bit off. We'll scale this. We'll rotate this, I should say. So, and that one looks okay. And there's the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to hide everything except the low poly version. Let's use border select. Select this loop. Border select again. Make sure we get everything. We're on wireframe here, so we're also getting all the loops at the back. Now it appears we have the bottom of this as well selected, so let's unselect that. Okay, so now we just want to bring this out, so let's bring back the high poly. Go to solid mode. And we want to extrude vertex normals. I'm just going to move this out until it pretty much hits these little rings. About there is good. Now the folded over area on the front, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to let the normal map take care of that. This top face, we need to hit E to extrude, scale it in. It's a little bit tricky to see where we are. We're going to scale this down again. So we hit this area. Scale this out, we hit the wall, so about here, and then we can just grab this ring. Again, just scale this out until we hit this edge, and then just bring it down a little bit. That's pretty much us there, and we'll do the same with the bottom. So again, E, scale down, E to extrude, move this up till it hits the wood. Scale it out a little bit till it hits the edge. We'll grab this edge as well again. Move it up a little bit till it matches this. I don't think I actually need to scale that down. Okay, so that's that pretty much done. So let's hide everything except our low poly. And we'll just do a couple of adjustments to this. The first adjustment we have to do to it is hitting smooth shading. Obviously we have some issues there, that's fine. I'm going to set up some normals by using auto smooth, which is set to 30 degrees, which gives us pretty much what we want. But you can see that we now we have smooth flat areas with the rings. So that's our low poly barrel. So this barrel itself is, let's see, edit mode. 1000 polys, 1000 faces, 2000 tries. Um, I think we did this 32 around. You could probably get away with 18 and still have a decent looking model. I would say that's a decent low poly model. Now we just have to unwrap that. Let's go to UV image editor. And let's actually just select the seams that we want here. So this is going to be pretty simple. 
I want a seam around here. Same on the bottom. And I want a seam up the side, so I'm going to do this from the back. So up here, mark a seam. And I'm going to see if I can get away with just using this. So let's see, select all, U, unwrap. And there we go, there we have our unwrap. So, I mean, it's not completely straight, but all the details on this are going to come off the high poly version, which is all unwrapped absolutely perfectly. And I think we can get away with this unwrap. So that's pretty much the low poly version finished. So we're ready to texture the high poly version and then basically bake all the results onto the low poly.